Hello and welcome. I'm happy to have you back for another creative recipe and tutorial. Today we will use all the inks and gouache made in the previous tutorials. In addition, I will share with you how to extract turmeric ink to use in an abstract composition. I will show you how to paint an abstract by giving you my tips and tricks. I will explain how to balance the masses, the different elements and the composition in general. One thing I really wanted to share with you is how I paint an abstraction with these inks because that is a creative process that came into my production once I had created them. I'm Adeline Julie from the Pigeon Letters design team. If you are ready, let's dive into the magic world of painting with natural colors. To make the turmeric ink, you will need plastic gloves, a spoon, a jar of water, a jar with a lid, turmeric rhizomes, a knife and a cutting board. Put on the gloves because turmeric is very yellow and it stays on the skin, on any surface really. We are going to use all the parts of the turmeric root. First, I peel and remove the skin, but I keep it and will cut it into small pieces to get a better color transfer when we put the pieces in the water. Turmeric has a strong coloring power. In many Asian countries, the dye extracted from turmeric is used to color the fabrics of clothing. This is the case of monks' robes. It is thanks to curcumin, which is the main dye of turmeric. So you got this. Take the peel off and pre-cut the turmeric. Take each rhizome and cut it very finely and into small pieces. Also cut the skins into small pieces. Put the pieces in the empty jar and cover with water. To make sure you don't put in too much water, take a spoon and cover it with water. With the knife, mix a little so that there is a sufficient impregnation. The whole thing must be covered with water, not swimming in it. Leave macerate at least for 24 hours. We are ready to pass the ink into the coffee filter. To filter the juice, you will need a coffee filter, a coffee filter holder and an empty jar to collect the ink. Once it has macerated long enough and you find the color intense enough, then strain it through a coffee filter. Of course, if you want to test the intensity of the color, dip a brush and do a test on paper. Wait until all the juice has passed through the filter. If you want, you can add uh, clove essential oil. By adding two drops of clove essential oil, you will prevent mold. To transfer the ink that has passed, we will use a spoon, homemade gum arabic or gum arabic, two small pots to put our ink. One will be the gum arabic mixture, the other will be the plain one. With a spoon, transfer the ink into the small jar. Keep one jar with the pure ink and if you want, you can always add the gum arabic preparation in the other jar. Don't add too much gum arabic. If you put five times half teaspoons of ink, put one teaspoon of gum arabic. Once 
Once you have mixed your ink with gum arabic, label correctly what you have in your containers. To paint the abstract, you will need the paint brushes from the Pigeon Letters with the Filber brush, the wash brush, the round brush number 8, number 16, number 2, and the script liner paint brush. a chopstick, a twig and a yarn, A4 cold pressed watercolor paper, the turmeric and gum arabic preparation, the pure turmeric ink, the walnut ink, the onion skin ink and onion gouache, lemon juice and if needed a darker color, a jar of water, a piece of used fabric. Take the wash brush and dip it into the turmeric ink. Then start at the top of your paper and draw a rather rectangular shape. I pass the brush several times to spread the color. I don't hesitate to put layers and to dip my brush in the ink. Don't think too much about how to spread the color. Just draw lines on the paper, keeping in mind that you don't fill the whole page and that the shape you choose is a rectangle. I also change the direction of the brush strokes and can just as easily do left to right and right to left or top to bottom and bottom to top. The goal is not to make a perfect flat without brush strokes or marks. I stretched the ink down the sheet too. While stretching the ink, I'll show you a trick that also works well is to change your brush hand. If you are left-handed, Put it in your right hand and if you are right handed, in your left hand. You'll see it's different and it allows us to not focus on our limiting beliefs like I don't know how to paint, I don't have enough dexterity and it helps us to increase our letting go. Okay, I continue with the right hand the dominant hand and I add color here and there by touches. I need to intensify the color here and there. Feel free to do how you like. The important thing is to take your time and think a bit out of the box. Now keep the wash brush and dip your brush in the onion skin ink and reproduce another style of rectangle. Switch hands to let go and paint this rectangle at the bottom of the sheet. 
it is in a way liberating because we continue to paint and our attention is focused on this hand that we do not use often and tier four, we will be much more precise on our gestures. Not trusting this hand, we let go of the subject and this allows us to see that we can paint very well with the other hand. The important thing is that the two rectangles do not touch each other completely. Take the brush in your dominant hand again and hold the brush with the end of the handle to be looser in your stroke and add onion ink to the junction and diffusion point between the turmeric and onion ink. Let the randomness and the mixture of the two colors at the point of junction. Take the round brush number 16 and dip it into the walnut ink. The technique of wet on wet is clearly used and there is a great diffusion of the inks on the paper. I start on the right side of the page and make three dots of the previously painted rectangles. From dots, it becomes other forms that stretch and live their life in the randomness of the painting. It is important to watch what happens and to appreciate the random movement of the paint as it poetically spreads across the page. I redo a dot on the left side of the sheet to balance the three previous ones. Then I change the ink color and take onion ink and apply it into the turmeric ink rectangle in a bigger and more voluminous way. See how I hold my brush? Rather on the end of the handle. It allows a greater ease of movement and gives an airy gesture much more ample and loose. Take the yarn, wrap your index finger around the yarn to get a good grip on it and while the ink is still wet, go from the left of the painting to the right of the painting. Start from places where there is no ink, on the edge of the sheet for example, and draw, thanks to the transfer of the ink soaked in the yarn, lines and marks which are made sometimes thanks to the color which is removed or the color which is added. Try to work your way down the sheet from top to bottom, left to right, and have areas where the yarn crosses other previous yarn paths. Take the script liner brush and go through the areas with ink to take it into the bristle of the brush and stretch it through the composition and the different paint spots. You can try with the left hand too to free yourself. We are looking for a line, but it doesn't have to be controlled and perfect. Let the randomness of your hand do the work and admire your precision. Again, don't think too much about where to put your line as long as you energize your painting with different passes through the different inks. If you wish, you can of course make these lines with ink on the brush. Okay, enough lines for now. Take the chopstick and where there is the cluster of inks, go back and forth as if you wanted to make the watery mass decrease. As you do this, you will scratch the paper and as it dries, it will make colored lines. 
hold your chopstick at the end of the handle and start scribbling in the ink. You can also make circles if you want. Do this in the two ink zones. Be intuitive in your gesture. This is just to make marks. Holding your chopstick at the end of the handle allows you to have a blurred, less precise and also an intuitive gesture. That's what we are looking for. Holding it like this forces you to do scribbles and lose gestures. Finally, take the lemon juice with an eye dropper. If you don't have an eye dropper, take the round brush number 16 and make scatter patches in the places where there is walnut stain ink. You can use the eyedropper as a guide, like a pencil, while spreading a bit of lemon juice or do it with the round brush number 16. Okay, let's let this first part dry. Take the filbert brush and dip it into the walnut ink. Start at the top left of your painting to mark with the walnut ink. I use the filbert brush because it gives the possibility to leave a different shape than with the round brush or the wash brush. As everything is dry, we will apply colors, shapes, and this will give the effect of layers, which is also a technique of watercolor. The layered effect is often sought because it gives thickness and depth. It is also important to add touches with your brush where there is no effect already created in the first pass, so as not to cover them. Take the round brush number eight and dip it into turmeric and make little round shapes. I'm sure that when you will realize your abstraction, you will not have the exact same distribution of the diffusion points and lines, and it does not matter. What I'm giving you here are some tricks I use to make abstract shapes in a random but also controlled way. You can put the turmeric dots next to other values and offset from certain areas that are still blank. Take the twig and dip the twig in the darkest ink, the walnut ink. The goal here is to connect some of the different circles that were just drawn. I use the ink from the dots to drag it across the paper and leave a fine mark of this passage. I balance a center line with another line towards the top left. Using different tools allows for more special and unexpected styles of strokes and even composition. The fact of using different tools makes it possible to have styles of lines and even of composition a little more particular and unexpected. Take the round brush number two and dip it in the onion ink. Here, the goal is to add another color sparingly. Take your brush at the end of the handle and pretend you don't know how to hold it. Try to make your hand movement a little jerky.
To give you that slightly uncontrolled effect, you can also change the hand brush. By making these small, light touches of paint, you add layer, detail, depth and balance to the design. We want to have something completely random or intuitive. Okay, now the fun part. It's time to make some splashes. Take the round brush number 16 and dip your brush in the walnut ink. Tap on the handle of your brush and let the splatter spread and settle on the paper. Choose a place to do it. Don't do it all over the composition. It loses its charm. Then take the script liner brush and draw connections between the smaller splashes and the larger ones. Connect the spots. Make one to three passes and make tangled curls as you go back and forth with your brush. Then take the round brush number 16 and add color to certain areas of the composition. This serves to balance the whole thing out. Dip in the onion ink. Then in the turmeric ink. Feel free to put colors where you want them. The idea is to go close to areas that have already been worked on to add a layer or a texture and to go as close to areas that are not very rich in materials, traces, line, colors and apply a color. I remind you that you can find all the recipes of the inks made during the last tutorials on the blog of the Pigeon Letters or watch the videos on the Pigeon Letters YouTube channel. Take the filbert brush and take the onion gouache. Use the filbert brush shape to mark your paint differently. Make a circle, a little straddling the part still white and the one with turmeric. Make a small line near the white part, turmeric and left of your sheet. Then draw a line above your painting by flattening the brush hair a little. Don't add too much. Also admire the depth created by different textures Final step is to add lemon juice here and there. With the eyedropper, apply drops of lemon juice in the elements that you have just painted with the gouache. If you don't have an eyedropper, take the round brush number 16 to leave drops of lemon juice and make strokes like I do here. You can stretch the lemon drops into your paint either with the eyedropper or with your round brush number 16 if you don't have an eyedropper. You can see that the lemon juice, once applied, works well in the parts with onion ink gouache and those with walnut ink. We have accomplished all the steps that allowed us to realize this abstraction. Now we have to let it dry. 
That's it. Well done. Look at your abstract. Look how the inks dried and dissolved and transferred. The strokes and marks made with all those different brush strokes. Also admire the depth created by different texture and the colors of nature. Once you've tried this tutorial, tag me at Adeline Julie B and Peggy at The Pigeon Letters so we can share your paintings and your lovely natural colors. I was so happy to share this with you and take you into the magical world of painting with natural colors. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll see you soon for more creative ideas and tutorials. Until then, cheerio friend!